Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. And in today's video, we are going to be checking out a latest update that came out on pretty much most of the books devices. In this case, I'm going to be checking it out on my Note Air 3C. So not a tab line of devices, but the regular line of devices. And the update in question is, I believe, 3? 3 point... 5.1. I think it's 3.5.1. So let's check it out and see what it brings to the uh, books devices. All right, so let's see what the version 3.5.1 of the books OS system offers for the non tab devices, right? I think it's going to be a very similar crossover uh, between tab and non tab devices. But in this case, I am checking out um, on my Note Air 3C. And uh, there's a few things here. So the first stuff here, not really that important. But these are the updates that we can actually look forward to. And let's first check out the overview and see what warrants testing and what doesn't. So uh, system and apps uh, support importing system fonts. And that I think is really cool, but I'm not going to be doing that yet simply because that requires a lot of testing back and forth and a lot of restarts. But in theory, what that actually allows you is to import any font that you like. That's a big believe within certain limitations. And then you can use um, that specific font to be used system wide on all the menus everywhere. Uh, and that is a recipe for <laughs> a really good thing and a really bad thing, because if you load custom uh, fonts, it can turn into a disaster. On top of that, each time you want to apply the new fonts, you have to restart the device. So that's something that I'm not going to be testing out in this one. This is uh, I'm just letting you know that that's something that now you can do, which is, I think, pretty cool. Um, but it is a bit of a can of worms because you can we can easily uh, uh, upload and use fonts that won't really fit the uh, buttons, the menus and things like that. So it's a lot of trial and error. But if you find something that you like, then it's certainly a cool thing to have. Then we have optimized the effect of using custom fonts for third party apps. Pretty much the same thing. Um, yeah. Uh, leaning on to the use of custom fonts. Support using email or phone numbers to unbind the uh, other Onyx accounts. Support customizing the navigation bar. Um, that I'm not really sure what do they mean. I will check that a little bit more because if this is the navigation bar, then then that's something that we used to have, but we'll see if they have more options or not. Then we have fixed Wi-Fi connection issues on some models, fixed input issue when connecting to a wireless keyboard. I never had that. It's good to know. Fix the issue of input method co uh, covering input boxes in some apps that I've had. So that's a good thing. Fix the issue of some devices freezing due to stylus interference. Never had that. That's weird, but that's interesting to actually have that as an option. And yeah, if I go into settings and gestures, there's the navigation bar here and excellent. Yeah. So before you had the uh, option to choose between preset options, but now we have custom and then in the custom, you can actually arrange them any way you want, which is great. It says tap to add, tap to remove. So, okay. So for example, uh, can I rearrange them by dragging? Yep. So if I want back there, I want my home here. I want my refresh over here. I guess press and hold a little bit. Okay. Maybe like this. Okay. That worked better. And it actually is reflected immediately here in the navigation bar. So that is pretty, pretty cool. And if you're not using some of the options and you use a different kind of uh, thing for that, so I don't need this one. So I'm going to get rid of that one. And I actually never use refresh manually. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. And these are actually only the three that I use. And I really appreciate the option that we have this now to actually add. So that's pretty cool. All right. Now let's see what's updated in the library and Neo reader support sharing directly after opening a document. That most, that's basically more like a more like a fix of a bug, not a new feature. Uh, support performing OCR in bulk for PDF documents. Onisex account login is required. That's new. 
because uh, previously it was just a double tap on a single one so now you can actually OCR in bulk but I don't know what that actually means but we'll see then fix the issue of being unable to long press the select words never had that fix the issue of deleting blank pages automatically recovered uh, didn't have that either but I don't use the blank pages that much in documents so it's a good thing to know that it's fixed Fix the ad adaptation in scrolling view, trimming blank edge. Uh, okay, that's okay. That's definitely not something that I use. So I can't really comment on whether or not it was broken. I've never used the scrolling view because it's not something that I prefer on these devices. Okay, so in the library, a new reader sharing, we also have the performing OCR in bulk on PDF documents. Let's Let's check that out. I think I was dumb. Uh, I forgot that it has the OCR recognition for scanned PDF pages. This is not handwriting rec recognition, but let's see if it actually does that because I've never tried that. So format 300 times remaining today, page count one of 300. So what, it's gonna recognize, okay, I want you to recognize two pages, this one and the next one. This page contains text, text. Do you still want to perform OCR recognition? And it's recognizing text here. So let's see if it's gonna perform um, this one. And of course you need to be logged into your books account and you have Wi-Fi because it's basically, yeah, just sending info to the server. It does the recognition and then that's that. You can select text and add annotations now. And let's see if, uh, <laughs> if it did anything or not. No. Okay, so that's me being a dodo. Um, the OCR recognition is not of the handwriting in the PDFs. That would have been really, really cool. But instead, it's actually just simply, yeah, optimizing the, the OCR recognition of scanned pages so that it can turn the scanned text content into actual text content so that you can you know, use it as a normal PDF file that you can select it and uh, uh, underline it and highlight it and use it uh, in other ways, which is still good. It's just not what I thought and hoped that it was, but okay, at least that's that. All right, and in the final bulk here, we have for the notebooks, we have support exporting as PDFs in four sizes, original A3, A4, and A5. Cool. I actually like that. That's that's very, very cool to see. Um, um, I'm not gonna be testing that simply because it's just a very simple thing. You just you just have a new option. I'm gonna check how the menu is imp uh, uh, implemented, but it's just a cool thing to have. Optimized notes template application. I don't know what that means. Fix the issue of the font style not taking effect in text notes. Okay. Fixed recording related issues. <laughs> there were so many recording issues. Which ones? That's a very, very blanket statement. Fix the issue of blank pages when embedding the exported uh, vector PDF of notes to K Reader. Ah, uh, okay, that's a very specific thing. And fix the issue of failing to move text boxes by hand touch. All right, so I'm not really sure that I'm gonna be able to test out uh, any of this really. Uh, first of all, I'm not using K-Reader. Second, second of all, which recording related issues? I'm gonna see what are they talking about, the notes template application and what are the export options here. So let's do that. All right, so here we are in a notebook and let's first check out the templates and immediately I can see that we have this now. Uh, so they've actually, I think they extracted some, some of the stuff from the options to be more here and most important one so application range to all existing uh, pages current page only blank template or last used template so that's pretty good i think that that's a really really good thing to actually see that they are applying that and then you can just go here and then we're good good um okay so the other thing was the exporting options so if i go here to share an export and then i just say like okay i want this this and this and i want to export these three selected 
Uh, where are the size options? Huh. That's... Oh, in the bitmap. Okay. So single page PNG, no. Vector based PDFs, yes. A note file, obviously, no. And bitmap PDF. Okay, so you have the uh, options here for the vector based PDF and bitmap PDF. Cool. So the options are the original 496 by 661 uh, millimeters. Then we got A4, A3, and A5, which obviously will be really helpful for reducing file size and things like that, so that you don't have to have them unnecessarily um, huge. So I like that. Um, I wish that the user interface implementation was a bit nicer, um, but so, yeah, that's that's a very small nibble. And then I should be able to move it with the finger, which is definitely the case, which is what they said that the, you can actually do now. So that's, yep, those things seem to be working fine. And I just wanted to cover the system display thing. So you go into settings, system display, and then you have the uh, settings here. So you can choose uh, the included fonts and there's more than we had before we had just a couple uh, before now we have a little bit more and you have also the option of importing fonts so what is this the font packages will take uh, up some system space it is not recommended to import excessively large font packages third-party fonts may result in missing characters garbled text or abnormal interface display please confirm before importing supported formats are ttf ttc and otf so yeah, stuff that I said, it's like opening a can of worms, you have to give it a warning sign here, but you can import fonts, yes, and you can import them from a folder. So the process would be you transfer the fonts that you want onto your device, and then you go to systems, system fonts, and then you go import font, and you choose the font that you want, and then you choose it, restart the device, and see what kind of mess you get. Okay, so some things are definitely added to the platform. I've seen some small improvements as well regarding maybe the user interface stuff. I'm really not sure if it's just an impression or not, but it seems like things are kind of getting a bit tighter and more improved. I wish that I had seen maybe in this one, for example, more obvious improvements. While some of these are quite nice and interesting and fun, I mean, system fonts are certainly gonna be a fun thing to explore. It's useful that you can actually customize the navigation bar. Those are really, really nice uh, customer or user creature comforts. Um, there are more functionally uh, important things. For example, copy paste functionality is really, really convoluted. And while this is like, this is primarily needs to be a reader and note taker and you need to get those things nailed down properly and the platform still doesn't have that so while on the one hand i do like that uh, certain things are being addressed and these creature comforts are certainly nice to have yeah appropriate choice of words these are nice to haves but on the bottom behind them you have should haves and behind them you have must haves and we certainly have quite a few must-haves that have not been addressed yet. So in my mind, tackling the nice-to-haves before having the must-haves ready and done is not really, um, yeah, it's not, it's not a great place to be. But that being said, uh, it's certainly better than what Remarkable is doing. Um, it's miles away from that, unfortunately. Um, that speaks more of the remarkable, not of this. But overall, I think it's, yeah, it, it's nice. 3.1.1, I think the update is nice. I hope that you liked the video and that you found it informative and or useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell in the description of the video below. Where you can also find a link to uh, playlists for MDO and MMP. When what are those, I hear you ask. Well, those are the hyperlink PDF files that you can find on mydeepguide.com shop. And you can head on there and purchase those if you like to support the independence of mydeepguide.
deep guide or if you would like to have a really really good uh, yearly quarterly monthly weekly daily professional or personal organizer which would be the MDO or if you need a really really good uh, organizer for your meeting planning needs to centralize simplify and organize all that that's the MMP if either of those sounds interesting check out those playlists below and then you see if these are the products for you or not. Either way, purchasing of these products helps directly the independence of my deep guide, because as you can see, I don't have sponsored content or anything like that. My opinions are my own and yeah, my work is my own. So yeah, purchase of these products directly helps support that independence and my work. Let me know what you think about the update itself, about the features and what are the things that would be most important for you if you're a books user. And also it would be interesting like if you were a books user and then you kind of moved away from books for some reason, what would be the features that you wanted to see but you didn't actually get to see on the books? Because I think this would be interesting to parlors to kind of hear from you guys from the real world users. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.